was supposed to be for the British submarine. Let's try it again. The Project 641 Soviet Submarines, NATO code name Foxtrot class. Let's talk about the history of this Cold War warrior. The Foxtrot class submarines were built to replace the Zulu, Whiskey, and Romeo class of submarines, which were basically derivatives of the Nazi Kriegsmarine Type 21 U boats. The 641s would feature a much larger ammunition capacity, endurance, and range. 160 submarines were originally ordered, but this was reduced to 79. Its endurance was 11,000 nautical miles at 8 knots. Not 80. Not 18. 8. This was a very slow submarine. These submarines were also not very stealthy due to the amount of noise made by the machinery from within, and the decision to have three propellers. By comparison, the United States had basically switched to a single propeller with its Skipjack class submarines. Single propellers were also found to maximize the underwater speed of submarines, which the Foxtrot didn't have. The Foxtrots were only armed with torpedoes. These weren't ballistic missile submarines. They had six 21-inch torpedo tubes at the bow and four 16-inch torpedo tubes facing the stern. The torpedoes could also be armed with nuclear tips to give the subs a pretty big punch. More on that in a moment. One thing to note is that this is one of the last Soviet submarine classes that did not utilize a teardrop hull. In this picture, you can see the Virginia and improved Virginia class submarine bow, which did use a teardrop hull. This type of bow significantly reduced hydrodynamic drag when submerged, but actually created more drag when the submarine was surfaced. As a diesel-electric submarine, you could only stay submerged for a maximum of 10 days, so the designers kept the conventional bow that provided decent performance when submerged and surfaced. You might be wondering why the Soviet Navy would be building diesel-electric submarines like this when the United States was already commissioning massive nuclear-powered fast attack and ballistic missile submarines. The reason was cost. Not only were diesel-electric subs cheaper to build than nuclear ones, but they were also much more economical to operate. I also truly believe that this reflects the Russian design philosophy that better is the enemy of good enough. These Foxtrot-class submarines got around. Everyone from the Soviets to the Indian to the Polish and the Ukrainian navies used them. They were only retired from the Indian Navy in 2001. Not bad for a submarine that was built in the late 50s. The Ukrainian Navy in particular operated one until 2014, when the Russian Navy captured it during the Russian intervention of the Crimea. The submarines were probably most famous for their actions during the Cuban Missile Crisis in the fall of 1962. Four Foxtrot-class submarines were dispatched to the Caribbean Sea to support arms deliveries to Cuba. When the subs arrived, President Kennedy had already formed a naval quarantine to prevent Soviet missiles and Illusion IL-28 bombers from reaching Cuba. They were met by Essex-class anti-submarine carrier USS Randolph and approximately 11 other Gearing and Fletcher-class destroyers. The ships dropped practice depth charges to try to force the submarines to surface. Submarine B-59 was commanded by Captain Valentin Savitsky and sub-flotilla commander Vasily Arkhipov. They had not been in contact with Moscow for several days and didn't know if war had already broken out. If Captain Savitsky, political officer Meslinikov, and flotilla commander Arkhipov all agreed, they would be authorized to fire a nuclear-tipped torpedo at the American fleet, which would have undoubtedly started a nuclear war. Of the three, only flotilla commander Vasily Arkhipov decided not to launch the nuclear torpedo. With the submarine's batteries running low, the crew surfaced the submarine and awaited orders from Moscow. Another two submarines were also forced to surface. The remaining one slipped past the Americans. After the Cuban Missile Crisis, Arkhipov continued serving with the Soviet Navy and was promoted to Vice Admiral in 1981. He retired in the mid-1980s and died on August 19, 1988. And this is why you can take your Typhoon and Sturgeon-class submarines and you can shove them where the sun don't shine because there's only been one submarine class that I've waited forever to see. You know, aside from USS Jimmy Carter, the F-22 Raptor of the ocean. <laughs>